Thank you very much. Um, uh, the, uh, by the way, the Veritas program has now been transformed, um, and part of that evolved into what's called the, the Winbridge Institute, and we'll be hearing from Julie Beischel um, in a couple of days on some of her work. Um, this particular work is um, it's called The Effects of Spiritual Energy Healing Intentions on Patterns of Cosmic Rays. And you're going to see that it fits within the, the framework of the previous two presentations, of course, which is one of the reasons why it's here. But it's very nice because of the, uh, some of the phrasing, including the non-entropic nature of uh, both living systems and also healing. And it's going to address, I think, an interesting um, potential mechanism by which the, the more controversial non-local actions may, may occur. The, uh, just by way of background, uh, some of you may be aware of these two books, which were written for the lay audience that discusses, uh, reviews a lot of research in the area of, of distant intention and uh, group intention um, effects on both humans and uh, and animals and, and cells and so on. And the, um, most of these, the, this kind of work, including I think our organization, uh, as a rule, we tend not to address the, the more overt, if you would, spiritual mechanisms that might be involved in underlying these kinds of processes. And partly because of research that we do in energy healing and also spiritual healing, I end up talking to a lot of healers and have learned some of these techniques myself. And there are a number of assumptions that they make. And, they, and these are common. They're not uh, universal um, in terms of assumptions, but they are common. And number one, there's the assumption that there's some sort of a universal source energy exists, that this universal energy is typically invited to enter the mind and body of the healer or the prayer. prayer. The healer's intention then directs this universal energy for the quote, best and highest good for the individual or, or organism that they're uh, seeking to assist, and that this universal energy expresses some sort of a higher power uh, that has a, quote, higher frequency. Now, the research question that we asked in this particular experiment um, is as follows, and that is, if a healer intentionally directs this universal energy into a light, tight chamber containing a highly sensitive, low light, cooled CCD camera imaging system, which is capable of detecting ongoing patterns of high frequency slash cosmic rays. Um, will the healer's intention result in a measurable increase in the ordering of the patterns of these cosmic rays? Now, how I got into this particular area of research it would be a great journey, but we don't have time to go through all that. So I'm just going to go right to the methods and the findings of this particular experiment. This is a center image, is a picture of a, the camera which is mounted into, on a light tight box. Uh, the camera to the left is controlled by this controller and power supply. This is a, a Princeton's instrument um, cooled camera system. The, uh, the photo on the left shows what the box looks like when it's opened. There's a stage, the lens is inside, and it's focused. Uh, there just so happened in this particular picture that I took, we had a piece of stainless steel on the, uh, on the platform, and that, that light that looks like it's floating up there is actually an illusion created by the flash. Um, the, uh, that is then in a light-tight room. And adjacent to that room is a separate smaller room which houses the computer system that controls this, which is the place where the, uh, the data are collected and also the energy healing work takes place. Um, and when the, the healing work is done, that room is also uh, made dark so that the uh, intender is in a quiet environment so to sustain his uh, or her intentions. Now, we've done a lot of research on using this camera to measure low light and do low light imaging of living systems. This is one of our recent experiments. I'm doing this just to illustrate the sensitivity of this camera. These are actually 15 minute exposures of um, pieces of string beans that were arranged in, a, as you can see, in a row of 10. Remember, this is a light tight room. And the, uh, all living systems uh, generate what are called biophotons, which are uh, from the pop group and others, uh, coherent patterns of light. And you can actually um, det detect the, uh, the consequences of those. As you can see here, these, these plants are literally, quote, glowing in the dark. 
And also, you'll notice that there are these little white spots in, the, in that left diagram. Those are cosmic ray bursts. They're bursts of uh, muons and, and, uh, and gamma rays, which are, uh, quote, artifacts. The camera is not designed to measure this. You actually remove these, these bursts from your statistical analysis. The, what I've then done here is just amplified the image just to show, because one of the things we've been interested in are the question of, quote, auras and also the extent to which there are interactions of light among plants. And you can see very clearly when you really increase the gain, of course, you see a lot more, quote, noise and such, but you can also see that there are, there's light around the, um, these, uh, these beams, and there's also seemed to be some structure of interaction between them. Again, that would be a whole, whole lecture which we don't have time to go through. I just want you to see that the camera is very sensitive. We use white background because we want the light to be reflected back to the lens. Now, in this particular experiment, which was looking at the effects of, of, uh, of the spiritual energy healing intention, uh, we were using an empty chamber. So there was nothing in there. It was a completely black box. There were no, there were no um, plants. It was just a, just a white piece of paper. Briefly, the experimental design was that there were a total of 16 intention runs. Eight runs were, were of distant spiritual energy healing, it was a particular practice of the, uh, uh, called Joe Ray, which this practitioner was, was skilled in. It is, he had practiced with many other techniques as well. And then eight runs of uh, what we call distant focused meditation controls, because we were interested in seeing to what extent is it just the f his intention to pay attention to the, uh, to the chamber. So, and since he was skilled also in various meditation techniques, we could contrast what happened when he engaged in the spiritual energy intention into the chamber versus simply paying attention in his mind and visualizing the chamber. We had 16 no intention control runs. So every single set of trials had an equally matched number of no intention controls. Now each run contained five consecutive 30 minute exposure imaging trials. So a given run contained five 30 minute um, exposures. The first of each of the 30 was a background imaging trial, which you use for subtraction. So whatever uh, slight abnormalities there are in the chip or any other background um, information, you, uh, the system is, is designed to be able to, to pull that information out. And then we had four consecutive data imaging trials. Now half of the intention runs, we in, had the intention trial on data imaging trial number three, which meant there was also a pre, which is trial two, and a trial four, where there was no intention. The other half of the intention runs had the intention trial on data imaging number four. The reason why we did that was also to control for timing, to see whether there was a potential time effect um, on a given trial. The data were collected over eight consecutive Saturdays, and we did this procedure for the following reasons. One, to ensure that the laboratory was quiet. So what we could do is make sure that no other experiments were being run in the laboratory, which means that reduced noise and human interaction and so on. Secondly, to fit the healer's personal schedule, it worked for him as well. Third, to increase the healer's ability to focus his intentions um, for the spiritual healing intention conditions or the focused meditation control conditions. We wanted him to be able to do the task, and so we wanted to optimize that to see whether there was a phenomena here. There were four runs on a given Saturday. The runs were set up either in an ABA design or a BABA design, so that they were in each, each Saturday had two essentially sets of control runs and two sets of, in, of intention runs, and they, um, and they were run ABAB. The first B run had the intention condition for the third data imaging trial. The second B run had the intention condition for the fourth data imaging trial per Saturday. Now that we kept fixed. The ABA order for the first four Saturdays was ABA for the first four, and then BA, BA order for the second four Saturdays. So we wanted to, to make sure that the, whatever these effects were occurring, uh, that within a given Saturday, it, we could not explain it in terms of the, the order of the A versus the B. And the spiritual healing and intentions were on, done on Saturdays one, two, five, and six, and the focus meditation for Saturdays three, four, seven, and eight. And if you do the, the calculation with the counterbalancing, it essentially controls for most everything. Now let me just give you a feeling for what these data look like. Um, 
The image on the left is literally what the, the data first looks like um, um, when it, it's received by the camera. And it 